to the America F1 series. I'm Tom Cairns in the commentary box and I've got company this evening that is Byron who has recently just joined me um, from another commentary gig um, that we've done and uh, it's round eight of the championship, round eight of this ten round season and I have to say Byron thank you for joining me in the commentary box and what an event we've got coming up here in Brazil. Yeah, I mean, Brazil, it's actually one of my favourite circuits. It's actually one of my stronger circuits as well. I'm quite good at this circuit, and um, I'm excited to see what these drivers can do. Obviously, me going into it, I'm not really so aware of the skill level of these drivers and kind of where they stand against each other. So I'm, I'm really actually quite stoked to see how these drivers are going to shape up in the scheme of things. Obviously, I have no idea of any stuff going into it. It's going to be very much a, what is this going to be? How is it going to shape out? Because I have no idea. Well, I'm just going to send you um, a couple of um, stand-ins anyway, so that you've got an idea as to who's been doing well and who has uh, got some ground to make up. And those are the incense here now as we speak, as the 18-minute qualifying session begins and already we've got uh, a game for life disqualified for blocking the pit lane well that's that's a cracking start uh to the session we've got two disqualifications for blocking the pit lane uh somebody else got disqualified i think although i'm not entirely sure actually we'll find out in a moment but uh, ben McEwen, who's one of the uh, the front runners we've got four drivers in contention for the drivers championship ben McEwen is one of them uh we've got gamer james 06 in the mclaren Switchback 37 in the Alfa Romeo and the other championship contender is Radicon in the Mercedes. So those are the the top four to look out for, contending for pole position for round eight of the championship. We've got Melkis 22 who's just joining the session. So we've got a full grid this time around um, at Interlagos. Just like we did last time. We had a full grid at uh, Bahrain Short as well. So, um going to be interesting obviously four grids do provide more exciting racing because there's more battles to look up upon you can still get good battles with smaller grids it just depends on the field spread and then um, like there's an interesting kind of field spread here at um the, i actually just don't know the name of the league and that's a bit embarrassing yeah it's um, america f1 series all right well it seems like um, it's pretty close in the constructors between Williams, Mercedes and Alfa Romeo. And McLaren could maybe get in the mix. I think, especially a 10 race calendar, each race means a bit more. It's a DNF, a DNS means a lot more to your kind of championship bid. And I think it's good that we have this kind of full house and can really get a full gauge on all of the thrills and spills here. So, um, interesting. I want to see how Mercedes and Williams do up against each other. Obviously, it's going to be interesting. We've had a, uh, a Claren go off. Gamer, James, James um, rejoining the track very slowly. Um, I think it was getting... Kind of not... Yeah, I think it was getting out of the way of another driver who was on the flying lap. We can see Ben McEwen going over the line, posting a 1 minute 7.2. Now that's the kind of time we'll be looking for in this session for Paul. That is incredibly quick. Um, I think my PB is about a... Well, it's definitely not a 107.2, I can tell you that much. Um, so that might be behind uh, Ben McEwen. Uh, really quite twitchy. I'm not sure who that was. That was a... Mm. Aches 22. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think it's Maple. Yeah, he's incredibly slow. We've had two disqualifications for blocking oh, the pit lane. And uh, Malcus 22 has gone into the barrier. He's spun coming out of uh, what looks like turn 8, I think. I'm just trying to remember the uh, corner numbers for uh, for Brazil. Now there's Young Kel and Zina de Lago, or whatever it's called, down into uh, turn 4. But. Um, but yeah, we've got Shifty Gifty 15, who's set a, a 1 minute 8.2. Just want to have a look and see if there is any other drivers who are on a fast lap at the moment. Gamer James sort of is, but he's gone off to the runoff area on turn 
uh, six. I think I find it quite interesting, actually. Uh, Williams seems to be the better of kind of better than Mercedes at this stage, but obviously we haven't yet seen the true pace of everybody. Eighteen minute quality. I'm assuming a fifty percent race as well. Yeah, it will be a fifty percent race uh, in Lagos. Thirty six laps it will be in total. And as you would expect. Obviously, not entirely educated on um, what rules this speed follows as well, so I'm obviously very interested to um, see whether they have their own FIA system, and if they do, what kind of stuff can we expect from this, um, this FIA? Because, obviously, they'll be looking to um, investigate some on-track incidents, probably, with it. If there is one, so that is. I'm just kind of looking at uh, Stoke Bloke, he's on a hot lap, going pretty fast. I think he's not got his lap time invalidating. It's at the fastest middle sector, according to the game, could be obviously glitching. This game tends to do that with sectors, it tends to say you got the fastest when in reality you're the slowest. <laughs> I mean, we've got it Stoke Bloke. Yep, and Stoke Bloke going over the line to set a 1 minute 8.2. So it's a Obviously good luck there. True pace, but ben McEwen, right? A second faster at this stage. That is some really good pace. Um, and really, really strong pace. And I wonder whether anybody else is going to come remotely close to that. At this point, you're going to say no. But um, switch back. I wonder if he'll be making any switchbacks. Well, he probably won't when he's so high up the order, because he's currently second with a 107.6. Also, I would like to point out how smooth that transition is. I would credit <laughs> myself for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got also uh, a few other drivers on flying laps. We've got Radicon, who's on a flying lap, just coming through sector one. And we've also got Malgus22, who's not on a particularly quick lap. I think he's on a Probably on a recon nascent stuff of some sort. We've got Karim ZL07, who's back after missing the last couple of events. He's only picked up one point so far this season. That came in the second round of the championship at Monza. What can he do? Now, he's really could do with putting on an impression because a lot of the points that McLaren has scored has been scored by Gamer James, who's contending for the title. And also, the, one of the Haas drivers has. Uh, almost coming to a stop. I think that's maybe just to get out of the way of drivers on the fast lap. Krim goes over the line. It's a 1 minute 11 point dead. Um, uh, GCL makes 22. He's actually just at the fastest first sector. And interestingly, his start was less than optimal. Going through the final few corners, he wasn't deploying any uh, hot lap. He only turned it up to hot lap mode when he actually crossed the start finish line, which I thought was interesting because you would think they would do it as soon as they're going onto that very long straight to maximize their speed but he reluctantly did not and um he's just at the fastest middle sector as well so um i'm wondering can he take the triple purple and uh put it on the p1 position provisional pole at this early stage in the session got nine minutes 50 to go and he sticks in in fourth so Pretty respectable lap time, but not one to be particularly proud of when he's still a second off pole position. They set that time on the medium compound, um, Byron, so it, to be fair, that is a decent lap. Bearing in mind, he, he could go even faster um, on the soft compound. You can see Shifty Gifty pushing too hard uh, at turn six, and that's his lap invalidated. Um, just trying to see if there's any other drivers on a fast lap. At the moment, we've got Egremuga, who last time out in Singapore was in the Renault in place of uh, My Name Is Guy, who's currently second fastest. Egremuga in the Haas this time around in Brazil, alongside B Nutty Nutter. He seems to be on a pretty, he's definitely a slow lap. So he pulls it into the pit lane. Looks like he might have been on a hot lap, but he pulls it into the pits and deceives us all. Yeah. Well, Denmark 166 in the Renault is on a quick lap so far, gone purple through sector one, he's another driver to look out for, who could get into the 
top five on the grid. He could get into the one minute sevens if he's quick enough. Is he from Denmark by chance? <laughs> I think he's from the, the US actually. I don't know why he's got Denmark on there. Um, but the, unless, unless he's got like a family member from Denmark or he uses that as a lucky charm for himself or something. I don't know, but he has set the fastest middle sector according to the game. He's clearly on a very fast map. Is it fast enough though? I just noticed my name is uh, my name is Gui. Uh, I'm not sure how you exactly pronounce that, but he's got the second and then Denmark sticks it up into fourth. Yeah, so my he name is Gui. So uh, Gui has gone second fastest uh, a moment ago. He's less than a tenth behind uh, Ben McEwen, who's fastest. Ben McEwen has been on pole in all the races that I've commentated on. He may have been on for the first couple, but he's been on pole position at every single race that I've uh, commentated on in the America F1 series. So Ben McEwen, without a shadow of a doubt, is a very, very quick driver, especially on single lap pace. But he hasn't always won the race. He didn't win last time out in Singapore. He came home in fifth in mixed conditions. Um, the last race was won by Pure G. Jackson, who's not in um, this particular one. The racing point is filled in by uh, Game for Life 09, who's disqualified from the session already. So presumably he'll be starting at the back of the grid. Just noticed that uh, Ben McKeon, he's, uh, he's on our hot lap, so keeping an eye on him because he is going fast. He's four tenths up apparently at this stage in the lap. He could be setting a 106. Maybe not a 106, but he can most definitely get me into a 1 minute 7 1 as he goes over the line. It is a 1 minute 6. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Byron. You called it. It's a 1 minute 6.9. That's a stonker of a lap time. Yeah. I mean, what a incredible lap. Um, 106.9. That is so quick compared to the kind of average which is about 108 to kind of to three it's about kind of your average lap time for most of the field here at this stage similar there's quite a large field spread but interesting because that will very much change the order of this race and how it will pan out because if you're fast at the back you have to really hold yourself up behind them slower drivers and that could throw a spanner in the way to use a very British term. We do have a second driver in the 1 minute 6 as Byron because Switchback 37 is 5,000 down from Ben McEwen. Just 5,000. So clearly time... Close. Yeah, very, very close. But the thing is, who will take pole between the two? Because they both seem to be about the same sort of pace. They both seem to be very closely matched. So... One of them will take pole, probably, unless we see some incredible lap time come from Gamer, G Gamer James. I mean, potentially. I see no reason why he might not potentially pull out an incredible lap, but he hasn't set a lap time thus far, so... Yeah. Well, Gamer James does set reasonable lap times. Um, on par with the likes of Radicon, Switchback and Ben McEwen. We've got Edgar Muga on a fast lap, completing it. And he goes up to 11th on a 1 minute 8.8. .8. That's not too bad. Um, we want to see if there's any other drivers on the fast lap. Quasinada's time has been invalidated. And I wonder how long it will be before Game of James comes back out. Because he needs to get a move on, really, and get a time on the board before the session's over. Don't want to be starting too far back. Because you do lose quite a lot of time. And um, Guy's gone fastest! Ooh. That's a brilliant yeah. lap time. It's not much faster. It really keeps the gap close. It's a mere hundredth of a second. But that is a margin that the other drivers haven't found. And any margin over your competition is something you're doing better than them. So if you were, you know, if you were them and you're looking at that POV, you're going to be trying to pick out where they're stronger than you and how you can be better. And, um, I'm just trying to see if there's any other drivers on the fast side. No, Quasinada is. He's gone uh, faster than he has done before in Sector 1. I wonder how much the Red Bull's going to get in his way. He should be getting out of the way unless it is 
on a fast lap of its own. Not quite sure, does it? Look like he's on a hot lap. It's Ray 46 who's on a he's on an out lap. Is uh, Ray 46 and Quasinada lost time behind him. Now some I can imagine some of these drivers will be recording. So Quasinada coming back into the some of these drivers will be recording so that any. Um, infringements occurred for instance being impeded on flying laps or um, incidents in the race can be reported to the stewards and then they decide um, what is the best action um, so there is a system I think it's five point I think it's five penalty points you get um, which would get you a quali ban and six points would count as a race ban oh, that will be interesting um, yeah, penalty points are a bit of a almost a standard thing between different leagues. I think most leagues seem to have some penalty point system in place, and the um, league is clearly no exception. And um, I bet some drivers will be using it to a great effect to gain an advantage over their rivals by getting those kind of penalties that could hurt the competition. In, the, in a sense, and better. And B. Natanato improving to 15th place. He's gone much better, much faster than before. Ray E46 goes 14th on the 1 minute 9.4. Still a long way off uh, the fastest time, but he's gone a lot faster than he did so before. Um, and I'm not sure if Gamer James is, in fact, going to be. Oh, he is coming out now. So he's got time to get one flying lap in um, before the session. So we can see a gaggle of cars coming out at the same time. So is track evolution a huge factor here in Brazil? We can see Stoke Blow going up into sixth, one minute seven point eight. It's quite clearly close, and a lot of drivers with his yellow flags in sector three, and these drivers are just pushing. Denmark going seven fastest on a one in seven point eight, so improving in the Renault there. Indeed, interesting stuff. I just want to see if there's any other drivers on a fast lap at the moment. That's coming towards the end of their lap. Ray E46 coming towards the end of another one. Clearly got more life left in those tyres. DRS wide open. I know there's quite a few drivers coming out for their final lap. Most notably, the uh, kind of top three right now are all on out laps. Um, currently, the Williams is leading kind of that gaggle of the top. And he locks up a bit into turn one. Uh, very nice through the center S, though. That was very nice and controlled. DRS open nice and early. And um, really making the best out of this lap so far. I'm not quite sure if he gained in sector one. I wasn't paying all too much attention at the sector time. I was just focusing on him going fast. And he was going supremely fast. Here, but there's a Red Bull in front, and that Red Bull should be getting out of the way, and the Red Bull does indeed getting out of the way. But obviously, that little bit of turbulent, dirty air is going to wreak a little bit of havoc onto the situation there. And then um, he is slightly up, a little margin, but it is a margin nonetheless. And I'm keeping an eye out. Will he gain? Looks like he is still gaining as he goes down the main straight here. And um, it looks like he's going to take the lead he back. Is, he's, and he does. Yeah, he's, he's done it. And, Ma and Guy can't respond to it because he's had his lap time invalidated. So Ben McEwen on provisional pole position. We've got switchback who's on Switch a faster lap than before. Yeah. He's, so. he's not actually running hot at though, so I think he's actually given up on that particular occasion yeah he's nine seconds down yeah he's he's, two, he's so backed off there he's he's backed off out of that lap so it is likely to be the williams on pole and um rightfully so it seems like he is incredibly quick and definitely very deserving of it um i mean there doesn't really appear there's any drivers yeah i think it's pretty much qualifying over uh, you've got We've got one more who's on a fast lap at the moment, Ekremuga in the Haas. Ekremuga, yeah. Goes 11. It's quite good, actually. Uh, you get free tyre choice. That's a really good position to be in. 
Most no definitely other so. driver is going to be able to improve because everybody is in the pits or finish. So, um, yeah, that is incredible. Um, yeah. So Gamer James did go out for a flying lap. He ended up fifth place on the grid, which is not too bad considering he had been sat in the pits from the majority of that session. He maybe waited to see if he could get track position because he knew he was going to be very, very um, congested um, out on the circuit in Interlagos. So let's have a look at the grid. Ben McEwen on pole ahead of uh, my name's Gee in second at his home race, of course. Switchback and Malkis on row two, followed by Gamer James and Relic on, on row three. Stoke Bloke and Denmark on row four. Monkey Mafia, Shiffer Gifty on row five. Echo Muga, Ray 46 on row six. Then it's Gummers Indu, Bishop's Fing on row 7, Disimpi and Quasinada on row 8, Binatinata, Karim ZL on row 9, and Max R, SG and Game for Life, who were both disqualified at the beginning of the session. They make up the 10th and final row of the grid for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Byron, what can we expect here in Brazil? We've got drivers on different pace, um, but you have to say that if we do get as good of a race here as we did so in our previous gig, I think we could be in for something special here. Oh, probably. I would believe that this race could be absolutely sensational, and I would expect it, to be honest. I think these drivers are clearly very closely matched. Obviously, you had Ben McEwen. He took that pole position, and convincingly, he took that pole position. But it's going to be closely contended because come the race it's a whole different kettle of fish and who knows who could take the victory and who could really slip out of the reach um you know of that potential points and it's going to be interesting to see who wins and who loses in this race so i can imagine there's going to be quite a number of drivers highly considering what uh, tire strategy to go on the tyres do fall off the cliff after around about 10 laps or so, the soft compound. So I'll be interested to see which drivers um, do decide to go on the mediums or in fact the hards. I think uh, the weather could play its role. It is very dark in terms of the clouds over in the sky here in Interlagos. So rain could play its role. We've got the formation lap to come. So this is our opportunity to find out which drivers are on whatever tyres. So... And it, everyone, apart from Max RSG, are on the soft compound. I think it's still good to note, though, that um, P11 to P20 will still gain an advantage. by Because they'll be on fresher softs than the drivers in front of them. It's going to be a small game, but a game nonetheless. And as I said earlier, every game you can get is significant and will help you. And... Um, it's clear that these drivers are going to take any gain they can get. And obviously, um, Max R, SG, he's going for that ultimate strategy. And um, that could change things up, potentially. He could pressure in front by having that ultimate strategy. Um, whilst we've obviously been kind of talking about what tyres people are on, we've had two drivers disqualified. Uh, GCL Makers, I think it's Makers, 22. Um, I pronounce it as Malkis, but uh, however you feel is most appropriate. We'll find out maybe from him later on as how he actually pronounced yeah. it. I pronounce it as Mal uh, as uh, Malkis, twenty two. That's how I pronounce it anyway. As uh, Shifty fifty fifteen, as uh, it says, has been disqualified. Not actually disqualified from the session. It's just one of those um, algorithms within the game itself where if you touch a driver on the formation lap, you get just sent straight to the grid. Um, so it's they don't lose anything. Like it's a bit like the severe collision on the safety car. It's a bit unfair, um, but what can you do about it? You can't really stop it. That's why uh, in the racing league um, that we were just commentating for, they uh, tend to remove severe collision penalties under safety car, providing you don't remove them during a pit stop. So obviously it's a bit hard to negate a disqualification under formation lap, but, you know, I don't know. You can find a way. Yeah, I'm sure Codemasters will most definitely be looking into it as we are now in the PlayStation 5 era of video gaming. So it'll be interesting to see how the 2021 game ends up developing as the week goes on. But in regards to this event, round eight of the America F1 series, who will come away victorious here in Sao Paulo? The five lights come on. Ben McEwen, he takes it. 
Lights out and away we go. Ben McEwen gets off the line cleanly and he gets an even better start than the Williams side by side into turn one. And it looks as though the Renault the is going to get... Yeah, and I think the Renault is in front of the Williams' cars going off onto the runoff area at the back of the center S. But my Guy, my name is Guy, has got the jump on the Williams. There's a Ferrari off in the background, but Guy has kept the car in front of the Williams. And it looks as though the Alfa Romeo switchback is fancying his chances with the Williams in front. So my name is Guy's leader ahead of Ben McEwen. Then it's switchback, Gamer James. Radicon in fifth, and then it's Denmark. He goes side by side with Stoke Bloke for a moment there. Then it's Monkey Mafia, B Natta Natta, and Ekamuga rounding out the top ten. Uh, there's already a Ferrari leaving the session. Uh, and Guy's lost the lead. Guy's dropped back from the. He's lost the lead to uh, McEwen and Switchback. So he's, left. he's gone into AI. He's, uh, his game's either crashed or he's left the session by accident. But that was the dream start he needed. And now he's going to tumble down the order because he's under AI. Yeah, that's and that's the way you want to start. That's the big disadvantage of uh, losing connection and the AI taking control of your car. So Ben McEwen is back in the lead and switch back. One of his title rivals is right behind him in second place. In fact, the top four in the driver's standings are in the top four positions on the road. Well, I mean, I'm not particularly surprised. You'd expect that if you're high in the championship, you're very good on pace. And um, it's clearly the king of pace looking to take the king of the championship as well, Ben McEwen. Really didn't quite get the start he wanted, but the Renault just disconnected and that really allowed him to just take the lead back easily and simply. And um, my name is Goo, he just isn't back yet. He's just joined. He's just joined yet. So he'll be taking over his car shortly, but he's got a lot of work to do. A lot mm. of work. He's currently down in PA. Quite a fair few seconds off. The now as well, so. There's a spinner at the back as well. One of the Alpha Tarries has gone for a spin. It's Max R S G. I wonder if he's had damage to his front wing. He has on the left hand side, so he'll probably need to come back into the pits to get a front wing replacement. So Bertman Curran continuing to lead, and DRS is now enabled. So switch back, providing he stays within one second of Ben McEwen coming into the detection point. He will have DRS on the back straight as they're coming through now. I think he's probably too far back to have a go on this occasion, but I think the next time when they get... just got past June. Um, and also with the... Uh, I'm not sure if that's Max or who that was, but someone went incredibly wide at turn number one. Uh, also, he has just left the session uh, again, so clearly not playing quite to his liking, and uh, same for Ekron Muga, who's just also left the session, so... Um, a lot to be desired for these um, races who are currently in the top 10 as they aren't quite having the race they would like. No, and uh, Gummer's in the first of the drivers to get a time penalty as well, exceeding trap limits, I think. So I doubt that that will be the last penalty we'll see in this race. Bishop's finger getting past My Name is Guy. And uh, I hope that Guy does come back because he was sensationally quick in, in qualifying. It'd be such a shame he's back in now, but for how much longer? Providing his connections uh, back up to speed. Also, providing he, the game will actually let him take over his car. I, I think that might have been a problem before because, you know, he was in the session. It looked like it was all fine and dandy. I was just waiting for him to take back his car, and it just didn't happen. Uh, there's also a racing point um, of game for Life 09. He is just taking it to the gravel. Uh, he's doing a Valtteri Bottas to Austria. Just cutting some grass, and um, he might be cutting a bit too much because his tyres are definitely overheating. And um, that leaves a lot to be desired for the racing point as he's now trundling along down the main straight, and he, he's almost been lapped on lap number four. I'm looking at those clouds at the moment, Byron. Are we going to perhaps see a drop of rain pour down to the second? Now, just because we do see drops of rain doesn't necessarily mean that the drivers are going to be pitting for in fact someone has uh, crashed out it's max G, max rsg who's uh binned virtual it somewhere safety. yeah virtual safety car deployed now we just want to maybe take a quick look and see how he's managed to do that or whether he's okay he been... um so gooey's back he's racing at media he's rejoined the session he's not taken over his car yet 
But if now is a really good time to take back your car, now is a really good time. Because they, they, you don't really lose anything because your AI is controlling. So I'm just trying to see if he can get back control of his car. Uh, I know Gooey is back. Uh, and so is Ekromiga, actually. So they're both back. Both drivers that have disconnected are back in the running and can get on with their race, hopefully. Yeah, and Max R S G, who's, I believe that's his first out in in the America F1 series, and just looking on the reserve drivers list on, on on here, and yeah, I think that's his first. Yeah, it's up back on the way now. Green flags it is, and uh, someone's yeah, gone for a spin in sector two. It's it looks like. like Zekromiga and uh, Gui, I think they had a little coming together. I'm not quite sure what happened there exactly. I'm not sure if he even got damage or what. I think uh, Gui got a little bit of damage on his end plate. I'm not quite sure about Ekromiga. Uh, it looks like he didn't, but who knows? They might have got like a little bit of light green damage, which will still have a little impact. It won't have a major impact. Still is a little performance deficit which will probably likely follow them through for the rest of the race. But Gooey tries to send it to the inside of Ekromiga. Ekromiga sends it very deep and gets the center S's all wrong. And then um, he's uh, got Gooey all over the back of him. And um, Ooh, Gooey nearly banging wheels coming into turn inside. four, but my name is Gooey's got the job done so. That's Guy up into 11th place. Can he make up for lost time? Uh, there was a yellow flag in sector 2 and 3 that was cleared up very, very quickly. But Ben McEwen continuing to lead over Switchback, Gamer James and Radicon. I think uh, Ben McEwen, he's really got a, almost a, a bit of a comfy lead as well at this point. It's, it's remaining relatively stable. Um, and Switchback does have less ERS, which is a, an advantage if you're Ben McEwen right now. Having more ERS than the driver behind allows you to push a bit more when you need to and really conserve a bit. And I think that's going to be pretty useful mm -hmm. at this stage. It's a bit like a recovery perk, isn't it? When you don't have DRS because you've got no cars in front of you, unless they are back markers, the ERS just sort of gives you that little cutting edge to pull away from the uh, other uh, the drivers behind who are back in for position with you we've got switchback and gamer james fighting over second position yeah. just noticing how bad of a race it's been for um, racing point both of them have been lapped on lap number seven i think they're actually lapped on lap number six as well so you know, they were they're less than a sixth of the race in, and they've been lapped once. And someone's gone for a spin. It's one of the Hasses. I think it may be B Natsi Natsa, who they've just been lapped by the leaders. So, yeah, he's just. I think just... that might have been why he was so slow, actually. I think he was. The reason there was a yellow flag was because he was letting the faster cars through, and he's just taking it to the grass in order to let more cars through. He's dead last, and then um, been lapped down to P12 already. And lap number well, seven for him. No. Lap number six for him, if I'm correct. He's now just joined lap number seven. He's been lapped. And then Ben McEwen, he is pretty much flying this stage. Yeah. Still some to be desired. I think he's probably holding back a bit of his pace, maybe trying to extend the stint a tad as well. Um, yeah. It's difficult when you're on the um, high on the, a high amount of fuel because you're having to put more load into the tires at every single corner, which obviously takes more life out of the tires. And I think that's what Ben McEwen is most definitely taking into account at this stage of the race. He doesn't need to be pushing ever so hard. He just needs to make sure that he is out of DRS range from those behind and uh, the race win potentially could well be his by the end of it but he's still got that mandatory stopping he needs to take now so far six drivers have been given time penalties so far they are Bishop's Finger, Gummers Indu, Desimpi, Malchus, Karim and Quasinada. Yeah I think it's interesting I think a lot of these drivers are really 
trying to get a good result here. And um, there's only one driver that can finish on the top step, and every driver would like it to be them. And um, it's going to be a pretty hotly contested position, providing Switchback and Gamer James can get a move on. Uh, if they can, uh, I think we could be on to a pretty close fight to the, the race loop. But that could potentially change in this split second. If one of them, you know, makes a big mistake, there you go, there's your chances out of the window. And again, these clowns, very, very gloomy. I would not be surprised if you do see it. Okay. But it could just remain overcast for the entire race, which would not surprise me too much. Um, but just trying to keep a close eye on the circuit in case there is any wet weather. I really wish there was a weather graphic that could tell you a rough forecast of what is likely to happen during the race. But we are unlucky in the sense that we do not have such a graphic. And uh, Switchback's gone for a spin, would you believe, um, Byron? I don't know what's happened, but clearly he must have caught the curve whilst he's trying to battle with Gamer James, and he's fallen down to fourth place. And he's as he damages... his left side of his wing, yeah. Yeah, he's he has. Some of his wing. Yeah, he's um, going to need to come in. So... He's going to suffer horrible, horrible understeer. And he's got a time got penalty. Three time penalty as well. Um, yeah. Just adds insults to injury there. Curse. I said, what if one of them spins? What if one of them makes a big mistake? That is the big mistake you don't want to make, and he's made it. Yeah, and uh, that has, uh, he's fourth in the driver's standings, 23 points behind leader Ben McEwen. So that's the last thing he needed there, getting a, not only a time penalty, but damage to his front wing, and I think he's going to be coming into the pits. Now, is he going to go on the mediums? I think he would do, providing he gets the car slowed down in time, and he does, so. Looks very close there. Looks like he almost didn't quite make that. And could have made that into a massive, massive mistake. Big He's going on the hard compound. I think the mediums could have made it. I think that's an undersight on his part. It yeah. does look nice, the mediums on the Alfa Romeo. I'll give him that. It looks good on the, on the camera, but should have probably gone for the medium compound. I think they definitely could have made it to the end of the race. There's yellow flag in sector three, I believe. That's just the hass of the Matty Matter. Um, here's, however, fighting for P19, the last spot on the grid. And um, you don't want to finish P19. <laughs> well, unless it is maybe battling in an Indy 500 race or something, you know, P19 is better than finishing P33. You can see Quasinada down the inside of P Natty Natta and takes 18th position. As you can see, his teammate Game for Live's gone for a spin and uh, he's having a nightmare of it. I've just noticed that there's only, you know, these guys are incredibly quick and only one driver is using the F1 Esports helmet. Which is. Uh, switchback. Switchback. He's using the, yeah, he's using the F1 eSports helmet, which you got by participating in the F1 eSports events. I actually have it and use it in all of my races. Excellent. Uh, I mean, cool I'd be open to sort of racing in eSports if I could. Um, I do a bit of racing in my spare time as well, so, you know, maybe if I get a little bit more practice under my belt, um, then I can most definitely put my name down for it. But, you know, commentary is my thing as well, so it's kind of hard to find the time. Uh, to, uh, to race and Game for Life has uh, yeah Game for Life has retired from the session now where has he stopped I think he stopped in the pits so he shouldn't need um, a safety car unlikely and... I, I, incredibly unlikely as it stands I think um, yeah definitely Ben McEwen he's going to extend that lead in the championship um, in fact he should extend it by a decent margin, he definitely has the fastest laps. That would be 26 points, which will stick him on 132. And um, Raid would be on, well, he'd get 15 points a third, and that would stick him on 119. So there'd be a gap of 11 points going into the penultimate round. 
Um, and James would obviously get 18 points, which would move him up to 109. So it'd be very, I think it's quite close between these top three, and um, whoever is in first here is really going to be making quite uh, a leap. Um, not really too much battling going on with Gage in the uh, Grand Prix. I also keep on mistaking the uh, grandstands clapping for uh, the sound of rain. It's uh, a bit embarrassing, but that's exactly what I keep on doing, and it's frustrating. Mm. We've got the we first pit stops, actually. Um, yes, we do. Mercedes pitting. Uh, the Renault pitting. Renault actually pits for Haas. And yeah. um, Doak Bloke in the Ferrari also pits for Haas. These guys, they should have gone, and I stick by this, to them, to them mediums. Yeah, I mean, you may have a point though, but it's just how soon the tyres will go off the cliff. Um, which, you know, for a circuit like in Interlagos, um, we saw Monkey Mafia actually has decided to go on the medium compound lap after his Alfa Romeo teammate switchback that went on the uh, the hards. So it's, it's a mixture, isn't it? There's a mixture of points of views, actually, in regards to which is the best tyres to be on um, after being on the softs. And at this stage of the race, it's it seems to be very, very mixed. You can see Ben McEwen come into the pits for his... He gets change to slow stuff. down in time. That was a really quick entry to the pits. But Game of James Game is not so Game lucky, though. Penalty. Yeah, he just got a penalty for it. That's unlucky. Um, next is going to be Ray, and he's going to be pitting also by the seams of it. No, he stays out for track position. It shows he was going to pit, and so does uh, Gooey. He sticks it out on the soft compound tyre also. So these drivers, they're clearly going for a different strategy. Ben McEwen has still come ahead out, still come out ahead of him, and he almost hit the barrier on the inside and actually took a chunk of his front wing out, which he didn't do, luckily. But that just proves how interesting that is. He managed to get out of the pits before they had even taken his positions, and that really shows how his pace is far superior to a lot of the drivers here at the moment. Would you put him in the F1 racing competition, F1 league? Probably. I mean, a 106, was it 8 in quality? You know, that is incredibly good pace and um, I think Ben McEwen could probably um, really fight at the top of uh, F1 racing competition actually. I would even stand by that and say he is probably within the top 1000 in the world on time trial. I would have that as a guess and by the way Denmark he, I believe he had a spin um, because he fell down a few positions He was about stick for seventh and uh, had a spin and that just put him down in Yeah, and Gamer James uh, make, trying to make up for lost time is getting held up behind drivers who haven't pitted yet. Ray 46 is one of them and he's, he's not going to be able to fight it out in the middle part of the racetrack so he's going to have to wait until they get onto the start finish straight to get the move done but all this is allowing Ben McEwen to pull clear. Yeah, he's really doing a good job at this point. I'm slightly surprised that the soft compound runners haven't decided to call it quits, you know, after being on the tyres for 15 laps. That is quite a lot of laps into the race. Um, they are either really managing them tyres well or, they, or they're trying to extend that stint to its absolute maximum in order to really stop that. But Ray comes into the pits, he takes a very slow pit entry, incredibly slow. And, um, clearly doesn't want that time penalty. Yeah, clearly doesn't. And, uh, Gooey decides, huh, one more lap won't hurt, and um, it probably will hurt, as he will likely come out having lost significant time to the drivers around him. Speaking Switch. of the drivers around him, Switchback, I believe he just got past Monkey Mafia and Stoke. He has. He's got up into fifth place now, so once uh, 
my name is Gears, come into the pits. He will be back up to fourth place, which, you know, is not too bad, but can, he was running in second before he had that spin uh, about five, six laps ago. So that's, uh, that's not good news in regards to his championship. He needs to finish ahead of, uh, well, his title contenders, really, to stay in the hunt for the title. It's like, he needs to stay in the hunt, but he can't push too hard because another mistake and it is just going to set him back even further. And by the way, my name is Gooey, has now come into the pits and he does not get a time penalty for speeding. Um, unlike Gamer James, who now tries to chase down Ben McEwen. Yeah, he's going on the medium, so maybe staying out those extra few laps has... Uh helped him make his mind up as to which tyres to go on for the last stint and clearly the mediums is what he feels is the best option. Yeah, I'm just wondering if he's actually lost, you know, maybe he should have pitted a lap or two earlier because, um, you know, obviously when your tyres begin to go to that kind of tyre cliff where they've lost a lot of performance, the longer you stay out, just the more time you lose. And I think he's, I think he went a bit too far past that soaking tire cliff, and has, as a result, lost significant amounts of time, which he's now going to have to recoup. And maybe he's not going to be able to get the maximum out of these tires now because he's pitted too late. You know, if you hit you know too late from one compound onto the next and that compound only finishes the race on 20 percent have you used the maximum from that compound no so it's going to be interesting to see how he utilized those tires and if he really reached the maximum he could from it you can see my name is gears got past uh, monkey matthew on the start finish straight to go up into fifth position so those uh, tyres very much coming into their optimum window and uh, Switchback is the next driver up from him and I have to say with Guy on better tyres than Switchback at this stage you have to say it's just a matter of time before he does get past the other Alfa Romeo. You would say that but Switchback is incredibly quick and so is Guy so maybe they'll just fight each other to the point where you know these tyres are practically melting, you know. If you just fight and fight and fight, you're going to get quite a lot of tyre wear, so that's why you've got to make the move when you get that one golden opportunity. Because the longer you take, the more time you're going to lose, but Switchback has just got a three-second time penalty, so um, he's either got to get a move on, or he's going to lose that position, guaranteed, no matter what, as it stands. Mm. Another thing that's just come to my mind, actually, if you're um, switchback, do you let Guy go past and let him challenge those ahead of him and hope that he holds them up and allows him and brings him into play for the, you know, for a podium position? Or do you fight it out with him? Well, I guess that's something we'll only figure out when we see what he chooses. I mean, he's sticking with Guy, that's definitely for sure. But, like, Kind of what he's going to do within that is kind of the the real question, you know. You would think he's on the, the fresher tyres, he has the advantage, but you've got to think realistically, am I going to be able to keep with him? Because Switchback might not be able to keep with Goo. He's on the, the better tyres, the fresher tyres. And he's going to have uh, an advantage. You know, he's got more battery. He won't know that, but Gooey has more battery. And that provides an advantage. And, and, and he's using that most definitely to his advantage because he's got DRS on the start, finish straight, and goes past, switchback, and up into fourth place. Well, he made that look easy, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised switchback didn't put up more of a fight. He's already six tenths down. Quite a significant margin considering they've only been through one sector. Um, you know, and he's about to go through the sector where he's going to lose the most time in that turbulent, dirty air. I have a feeling, Richback, 
won't exactly be able to keep with the very easily. Um, and I think it will show. Yeah, I think it and will I... certainly show. To be fair, if he stays within that DRS range, he can at least stay up with him because he's got that time pound to remember has switched back. So the, if he can stay with him, then he's pulling clear of Monkey Mafia, who's four seconds behind him. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. You've got to be careful with it. But I think if he can stay with him, he's definitely got a, an advantage over Monkey Mafia, who, you know, doesn't have the penalty, could close up. But he hasn't got that DRS to kind of front help him to pull him along and could play into times and he's a Williams going incredibly slow. That's not Ben McCracken. No, it's that's Bishop's finger that's gone for a spin. Bishop's finger. What a new <laughs> there's some interesting names in this league. Bishop's finger. Yeah. And uh B Nati has uh, gone into the barrier um and uh, he's trying to stay out of the way of the leaders but uh, yeah that's not a good sight there for yeah, the Haas driver who's had a, a, another difficult race well. yeah he's damaged the front wing so he will need to come back into the pits for a change of tyres he needs to stay out of the way actually as well of oh he nearly gets collected by the Alfa Romeo of Monkey Mafia it just took a three second time penalty. yeah but he's, he's trying to he's trying to get out of the way of the cars behind him which is why he went um over the curb there. I shouldn't really be getting that time penalty, but that's the game for you. And it's F1 2020. Um, it's not a bad game, but there are some decisions which are unfair, I'm assuming. Oh, he's just got a five second time penalty as well for speeding. <laughs> it's, um, I think the game, obviously, they're going to be running strict corner cutting, I'm guessing. Um, and that's just gonna, you know, make that, you know, I think on regular corner cutting, you wouldn't get a penalty for that, but it's on strict. You have to deal with those consequences, and that's what you've got, so, um... I'm just looking at the time penalties at the moment. Gamer James has got eight seconds of time penalty, so as it stands, he would fall behind Radicon, and uh, he would just drop to third place as it stands, so he would lose three points in his quest for the championship, Radicon would gain three from his total. Then the nearest driver to Ben McEwen in the Drivers' Championship coming into the event is uh, Radicon. So as it stands in regards to the championship standings, uh, the gap would increase to nine points between Ben McEwen and Radicon. I think Radicon's um, predicting where he's going to finish in the championship. Because um, he's running the number two on his car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you another driver who's got the number two on his car, and that's Stout Bloke in the Ferrari. I don't think he'll be finishing number two in the championship. So. No. He's been c scoring consistently, though, as Stout Bloke. He's finished in the top eight at every single round, but his highest has been fifth, and he's currently in seventh place at the moment. So he's keeping up a, a consistent um, run of uh, points finishes, hence why he's it's fifth. Not, it's not close enough. It's not close enough for the championship. You know, you really have to be at the top, be really fighting at that, that top kind of level in order to have that kind of chance at the championship. I was for a bit in an F1 RC. Um, yeah, I had really good starts to my season. I got like a second place. And it was pretty good. Um, I think I DNF the first race and then bounced back on the second with a really good finish. I know at the Netherlands I didn't have any mental ways, you know, I like did a three stop strategy and then finished fifth. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just cut you off there because Ray 46 went wide through turn one. He got it all wrong through the centre S, took to the runoff area, and now he's fallen into the clutches of uh, Denmark behind him. Yeah, it's, um, might help Stoke Bloke on his uh, consistency. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I haven't got many points since um, my home, so it's good to have that kind of momentum, but 
it's got to be towards the front momentum and consistency towards the front if you want a brilliant chance. And Doug Bokey has the consistency, but he's not got the consistency at the front. He's kind of got this midfield consistency. He's your he's your Carlos Sainz so of F1, basically. Mm -hmm. Or Sergio he's Perez, consistent. even. Because Sergio Perez is a consistent driver when you, uh, when you think about it. He's consistent. The... Oh, there's an incident in the pit lane. I'm not sure what's happened, but there was an incident involving the uh, the McLaren that. of uh, yeah. Karim, who got he got hit from behind by uh, I think it was Monkey Mafia who came into the pits. That was a very strange incident, and now Monkey Mafia is going to need to get that front wing replacement. But that was that's incredible. Uh, did Monkey Mafia drive? So did he drive into the pits too quickly? when Monkey Mafia was slowing down, or was Monkey Mafia almost parking the car as he was coming into the pits? That was Not a very sure. strange incident, that. I've just noticed that, uh, the Matty Matter, he's not been lapped by everybody in the race. Everybody has been passed by Matty Matter. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, you have to feel for him, don't you? It's hard not to, I think. Unlucky, but you kind of got to make deal with what you've got at this stage. Uh, you know, really clamber onto anything you can, take away the, the positives from it. You know, you might have had that really costly instance of what can you learn from it, how can you improve into the next one. You have to have that winning mentality, and you know, it's kind of a mentality that I think Ben McEwen, Gamer James, Brave Kong. Gooey, switch back. They've all kind of got the same mentality of I'll do whatever I can but, you know, the sky's the limit, you know, but then you learn from every mistake. Like, you know, you go wide at a corner and you get a warning, you know, don't go this wide at that corner. You really learn and pick up a lot, even in the race. You're constantly learning, especially in Formula One of all sports, you know, there's always things to be learned on how early you can go on a throttle, when you need to brake, you know, exact all the racing lines and everything. You can learn so much, so it's always that's why I like Formula One. It's um, yeah. such an easy sport to get behind and just watch every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And there's also the likes of F two and F three as well where obviously it's a lot different to F one, but it's a it's a learning curve for the drivers. You know, coming up from such a young age, and even F2 is included in um, in the latest Formula One uh, gaming series. And um, I have to say, it's it just shows you know the difference in terms of the corner and grip that you have with the car. I mean, the F2 car is a lot less downforce than the F1 cars, but I think it's one of those of which it comes down to driver skill rather than the performance of the machine. Yeah, I think. When you like look at real F1, there's the Hamilton lovers and there's the Hamilton haters. And the haters tend to be like it hits the car, and the lovers tend to be you know the car has an impact, but the driver is incredibly important. I think if you start Lewis in a McLaren, for example, he would do good, but he wouldn't win the championship. Like it's down to the car and the driver. Uh, and the environment within that team. You know, I think it's important that we have the right environment. Um, it's also important, like, when you go into a race, you zone out. You know, the only thing you want to focus on is that race. So if you're, you know, a Banati Nata and you've got I mean, music blasting down your headphones, by the way, this is just theoretical, you know. Let's say he's got music blasting down his headphones, he's got the YouTube stream loaded, he's on a room in conversation with his girlfriend or whatever, you know. You're not you're not in the zone, you're not concentrated on that goal. You? You've got to really focus on one thing and work towards that, if that's your goal. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with the latest games is, unlike, you know, let's say Formula 1 97 or Formula 1 2001, where there isn't as much concentration required when driving the machine. Whereas in the latest one, you do have to concentrate really, really well. You even have to listen to your race engineer um, in case it gives you <laughs> information that's relevant to um, your event, basically. 
I don't listen to Jeff. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> well, he is there for a reason. That's what race engineers are for. Oh yeah, I, I, I get that he's there for a reason, but... To me, I like to try and, you know, always make my own reason. Yes, the race engine can be useful if you need to know the gaps the car in front, but most of the time I just tell him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Quasi Nardes left the session. He's had another wretched race in the America F1 series. So he's out of the race in the racing point. He stopped out in turn one, and Karim has slowed down because there's a virtual safety car. So yeah, oh, and he's <laughs> nearly wiped off the whole machine there as uh, Quasi Nardes. I wonder if he's. Uh, he's had the sort of similar incident to what, ooh, Karim almost going wide into turn one, going onto the run-up area. I'm gonna find out where Bimini Quasi Nardo is. I can't, can't see where his car was stranded. It was at turn Two one, four. he hit the barrier on the, uh, somewhere just before turn one. So, uh, he's the third driver to... I just saw it, yeah, I just saw it on your stream, because there's about 10, 20 seconds stream delay. And, um, yeah, he is not having a good day in the office. Um, <laughs> that can be said for certain. Ben McEwen, he's got five laps to go and he's been taking victory. Yeah, you know, and... Nearly flawless race for him. Yeah, and my name is Gear's got a time penalty as well for exceeding track limits. And you have to say, bar a mistake from Ben McEwen, He's got this race in the bag pretty much, unless Radicon can get by Gamer James and close in on him, but Ben McEwen doesn't normally make mistakes. Yeah, he's, I've noticed he's locking up consistently to turn one, but I think that's kind of a Mr. kind of consistent thing that a lot of drivers are, are doing turn one. Um, being very aggressive, locking up. Um, I don't think it's losing them much time. So. He doesn't need to worry. He doesn't even need to worry about the weather conditions either, because no rain has hit the track um, throughout this one. And I think if it did come down now, it wouldn't be enough to. Nasty snap on Gamer James as he went with um, one two. Just got a snap of oversteer. Really didn't help him on his uh, entry at Sicilia Corsa. And he's got that time penalty as well, which would drop him behind Radicon. At this stage in the Grand Prix, yeah. Who knows what can happen to Radicon, though? Anything yeah, and is it's... possible. Yep, yeah. we've got five laps to go in the Brazilian Grand Prix. Ben McEwen leads over Gamer James, who's second on the road, but that time penalty would drop in behind Radicon. My name is in, th is in uh, fourth place. He's recovered well after that. Uh, uh, connection problem, those connection problems at the beginning of the race, but where would he have been if uh, if it wasn't for those issues? Switchback is in fifth position, followed by Stoke Bloke, Ray 46, then it's Denmark, Gummerzindu, and Monkey Mafia, who made that um, second trip into the pits for tyres, is in tenth place, but uh, with uh, Gummerzindu's time penalty, he would move back up into ninth before this race is done. Yeah. Positions to be gained on penalties and not having them is quite helpful. Um, I have noticed, by the way, the sun's kind of coming out a little bit. Not much, but it is kind of there. Just a little bit. Through some kind of corners you can like, just catch a little glimpse of the sun. It's almost cool. Uh, it's like poking behind those ominous rain-looking clouds. I've just seen Ray 46 getting past Stoke Bloke actually as well, and Denmark 166 will be fancying his chances of getting ahead of the pair of them. He's got by Stoke Bloke into turn four, and that's seventh place for the Renault driver. Yeah, it's um, looking pretty close. I just realised something uh, regarding when you're lapped. Obviously, when you're uh, lapped, you do you finish the race a lap early. So you could technically be a lap under on fuel when you cross the finish line. That's true. That's very, very true. I've done that in the past on uh, on my team and on F1 career mode. If you're in a slower car and you're on a track like a Red Bull Ring or Interlagos or wherever, you can actually afford to go a little bit quicker if you need to, even if you finish um, a lap short of fuel. 
because it just doesn't change anything. I, I've, I've only just had that epiphany. It's shocking. It was just as I was looking at Bloomin' Fanati Nata, you know, and he's having his dismal race and he's a lap down. It's like, why is he not pushing? He could be a lap down. And no problem at all. And see, uh, and uh, Karim making a mistake there, coming out of uh, Young Cow and uh, Monkey Mafia has got past uh, Gummazindu and up into ninth place. Now he's going to run out of time to catch uh, Stoke Bloke, but at least Monkey Mafia is going to finish in the points. And uh, my name is Guy has left the session, which is not good news, um, especially when you've only got two laps left and you've got fifth place switchback although switchback has got three seconds worth of time penalty more than my name is Gears. he's <laughs> just certain... the fastest lap <laughs> yeah i'm not sure if he'll be able to keep that because the ai was controlling that and i don't think a one minute four is a realistic time that's faster than their qualifying time so i doubt that uh my name is gear yeah, will keep that no, one it's just funny that um and there's mentioned... a has of b natty nata going for another spin and that just sums up his he's, he's beached. He's oh my god, he's beached, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's beached it. How did he beach it? Can he, you can you not use reset's track? I think he's <laughs> That's a very funny one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He's been disqualified for parking in a dangerous location. Well, he would have he would have backed out of it anyway. His his race was done and dusted. But he'll still be classified, I think, because he has completed enough laps. No. Once you're if you're disqualified you you aren't classified that way. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. He may have a point after the race, uh, to sort of say, Well, I parked it there. And then he'll maybe go back on his streams to find out what lap he was on. Now, if you've completed ninety percent of the race distance, which for a 36 lap race, if you completed 32 laps, that would be enough for you to be classified. So, Which, but we are on... He was on lap uh, 34, so no problem for him, he would be classified. Oh, well, he, may be, he may have been he earlier than that, actually, because he was, um, he was maybe, you know, he was a few laps behind anyway, so he may not have been classified anyway. But here's Ben McEwen on his last lap, about to complete yet another victory to take him a step closer to the america f1 series title radicon will finish second behind him but at least ben McEwen can extend the gap at the top of the table to nine points going into the final two races of the season ben McEwen crosses the line to win the brazilian grand prix it's another dominating drive from ben McEwen. the scott takes his fourth victory out of eight races in this championship Gamer James crosses the line in second on the road, but it's Radicon who will finish in second place on the classification. Gamer James drops to third place, and Switchback has got by. My name is Guy on the last lap, but I don't think he'll keep but it he'll because lose the position, yeah. that's lose right. Position yeah. So my name is so, Guy will keep, will get back fourth place. Switchback is in fifth. Ray E46 will come home in sixth place to get some much-needed points for himself. Denmark will finish 7th at a Stoke bloke. Monkey Mafia 9th place. And uh, I think Gummersindu, even with the 15 second time penalty, will be 10th because he's the last driver on the lead lap. He is indeed. So, um, interesting stuff. Um, he'll definitely be keeping 10th um, because obviously the next driver is a lap behind him. So, um, good job from him getting a point which isn't great but it could be worse so um well needed points and good job ben McEwen on a, another victory to uh, add to the collection box and um i'm sure he's doing a, a lewis hamilton with his pole position awards he's got too many uh he probably has a full room full of them yeah well. he's got at least six of them as far as i know which is absolutely phenomenal and uh, I'd be interested to see uh, who got pole position in the opening two rounds because I wasn't commentating on those two rounds until uh, Binati Nata, the, t the, uh, the league owner, uh, called for my services to commentate. And uh, I'm so happy that I'm commentating this series. It's a brilliant um, championship to watch. So final classification for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Ben McEwen wins ahead of Radicon in second place. It's Gamer James in third. My name is Guise in fourth place and getting the fastest lap point. Switchback was fifth. 
had a Ray 46, it's Denmark, Stoke Bloke, Monkey Mafia, and Gummers Indu running out the top 10 point scorers. Bishop's Finger was 11th, followed by DeSimpi, Ekremuga was 13th, Malchus 14th, Shifty 15th, um, and it's Karim, in, the last of the finishes in 16th. Binata Nata, Quasinada, Game for Life, and Max RSG were the non finishers. Well, looking at the chunk. registered as a DNF and not a disqualification, so it clearly did something. Yeah. yeah. So looking at the championship standings, Bami Kirin extends the gap at the top to nine points. Then it's for Radicon in second place. Gamer James 06 is looking at the total. He's now 25 points off the top. And with Switchbacks' his fifth place, he's fallen another 15 points behind uh, Bami Kirin. So he's now 38 points adrift with just two races to go and 52 points left on the table. Byron, your last thoughts. Honestly, fast. <laughs> like, Ben McEwen, he was on it from just qualifying. That lap time was quick. I mean, I could not come close to that, even on time trial, where the track is at that ideal condition for you. He pulled it out of the bag, pulled something that many of us dream of, and you have to envy the fact that he has pulled off something incredible there and um there is no word of a doubt that he is definitely very happy with a result like that i mean it's a bit hard not to be impressed when you know that's your kind of pace and you know it seems like he was really on it from the get-go and in my mind rightful winner should have maybe should have even been closer to the front i think yeah well thank you for your time byron it's been a privilege having you on board and welcome to the america f1 series we'll be back next time in a week's time for the penultimate round of the america f1 series at sanford in the netherlands can ben McEwen clinch the championship at that time on sunday evening at half past nine British summer time. I'm Tom Cairns, here's Byron, and we'll speak to you again soon when the America F1 series returns. <laughs>